The combination of an iris and a lens created a defined image on the retina. In nature, the most likely way the lens formed was when part of the transparent liquid that fills the eye became denser. Little by little, this focused the light and vision became sharper. Once again, each step is an improvement on the last. The demonstration shows that the eye could have evolved by natural selection, just as Darwin said it did. In the Cambrian period of Earth history, 543 million years ago, the competition to hunt food, escape predators, and find a mate drove the eye's rapid evolution. The same is true of other complex organs, from beating wings to pumping hearts. Nielsen's demonstration shows that Darwin's big idea, natural selection, is theoretically possible. But is it true in practice? What evidence is there that evolution happened in these small step-by-step -step changes? Evolutionists claim that all large creatures living on land today, including us, came from fish that walked out of the water. But if some fish did become land animals, where is the evidence? We're all familiar with the idea that we descended from apes. But if we travel further back in time, our ancestors, according to the fossil evidence, were far stranger. To illustrate where we could have evolved from, imagine this skyscraper represents the history of life on Earth. The first floor is when the Earth formed, about four and a half billion years ago. Each floor we go up represents 50 million years, and the roof is the present day. If we travel to floor 87, 250 million years ago, our forerunners would have been reptiles, creatures like today's lizards, turtles, and crocodiles. Drop down another floor, back in time another 50 million years, and we were amphibians. Two floors further down, 400 million years ago, our ancestors were primitive fish, swimming in the sea. In the big picture, the fossil evidence tells an extraordinary story of our past, one in which living things evolved into new species, step by step. But there's a problem. Look closely, and the fossil record is imperfect. It contains gaps, missing links, that cast doubt on Darwin's theory. So do these missing fossils exist, and it's just we haven't found them yet? Or was Darwin wrong? When Darwin wrote his theory in 1859, the gaps in the fossil record were enormous. Little was known of human evolution. There were no fossil remains of hominids. Fossil birds seemed to appear in the rocks out of nowhere. And there was no evidence of how fish could crawl out of the sea to walk on land all crucial missing links. If Darwin's theory is to stand up, scientists need to find the missing links, the transitional animals that show that evolution happens step by step. Fossil hunter Neil Shubin of the Field Museum and University of Chicago is on a mission to fill one of the most crucial of these missing links. The world is full of missing things. That's the joy of science, right? If there weren't missing things, they'd be out of business. He hopes to find the transitional animal between fish and amphibians that shows how life came out of the water. His search has led him to one of the most northerly places in the world, Ellesmere Island, just 600 miles from the North Pole. What's remarkable about the place is there you're standing in an Arctic landscape today with muskox and polar bear. But the rocks that you're standing on, if you look inside them, have a tropical world, have tropical plants, have tropical fish. The rocks here once straddled the equator, but the action of plate tectonics over hundreds of millions of years has pushed them toward the North Pole. 
The rocks are 375 million years old, a time just before the first land animals appeared. If fish came out of the water, Shubin predicts they did it here. For five years, Shubin and his team traipsed across this barren landscape, scouring the rocks for signs of a missing lake. But all they found were sea creatures. Finally, in 2004, they made a breakthrough. We found little bits of pieces of bone on the surface. We dug in. Then we found a layer that contained whole skeletons. Then we dug further, and one of my colleagues, oh, I'll never forget this, my colleague was flipping rocks, and he found a snout sticking out the side of the cliff. We looked at that snout, and it turned out it was a flat-headed creature. Now, this flat-headed creature was unlike any fish that really lives straight in water. It was a very crocodile-like animal. And it's when we discovered that we knew we were finding what we were looking for. It was the highlight of five years of field work. Back in the laboratory, they carefully removed the rock from around the fossil. The result was stunning. A creature that perfectly bridged the gap between fish and land animals. Like a fish, it has scales in its back and fins, and you can see the webbing right here. But like animals that evolved to walk on land, it has a neck where a head can move separately from the body. It has a flat head with eyes on top, much like a crocodile. And most interestingly is, when we take the fin apart, what we see inside are bones that correspond to bones of our own arms. Shoulder, elbow, and wrist. They named the creature Tiktaalik, Inuit for large freshwater fish. Tiktaalik is a true missing link, a creature with scales like a fish and limbs for walking. Developing legs helped fish that moved onto land survive. It was probably because they offered this crucial advantage that legs and walking on land took off. Tiktaalik is a missing link that helps prove that Darwin was right. But we're lucky to have it. A rough estimate says that only one in a thousand of all species that ever lived are preserved as fossils. If you think that it took us six years of dedicated work to find Tiktaalik, that gives you a sense of how difficult it is to find fossil intermediates. Despite that, we have fossil intermediates for, all, for almost every major evolutionary transition. Since Darwin's day, science has advanced. Fossil hunters have found many of the so-called missing links. Fossils like Archaeopteryx and bird fossils recently discovered in China bridge the gaps between reptiles and modern birds. And excavations in Africa have uncovered over a dozen species of hominid. The fossils show that starting about four million years ago, an ape-like creature's brain grew steadily larger. It began to walk on two legs and learned to use tools. Step by step, it became a modern human. Natural selection can explain how new species evolve, including us. But some species remain a puzzle, because if natural selection works, they should not exist. So far, Darwin's theory has withstood the objections of its critics. But can it withstand the next challenge? Among the thousands of creatures on our planet are some that are so bright, so beautiful, they should not be able to survive. Evolution is all about acquiring features that help you survive. But many birds are so brightly colored that predators can spot them a mile away. So how can natural selection explain this? How could creatures evolve that are just begging to be eaten? In India, their natural home, peacocks are on the menu of one of nature's most ferocious hunters. The tiger. to survive in the wild, the last thing it needs is a handicap, a tail 
that makes it visible to predators and slows down its escape. For creationists, this is easy to explain. God created them this way. But for evolutionists, it's a puzzle. How could natural selection produce features that seem to hinder rather than help an animal survive? It's a problem that threatens to undermine Darwin's whole theory.